with this book, uh, I'm hoping to show what you might expect to see when you bring home a picture storybook from the library at school and neither you or your child has necessarily read the story before, so it's all new. Uh, and this is a way that you can share the book with your child uh, in a successful, happy, fun way. Hippopotamus on our roof having a birthday party. Yeah, have a look up here, there's some more words. It says, hooray, there's, there's a hippopotamus on, on our, our roof, roof having, having a, a birthday, birthday party. party. Hippopotamus on our roof having a birthday party. Good girl. That is part of the story, part of the title. It says up here, hooray, there's a, let's read it together. Hooray, hooray there's, there's a hippopotamus, hippopotamus on, on our roof, roof having, having a, a birthday, birthday party. party. So here I'm just supporting Scarlett in reading the title by reading just behind her so that she's reading the bit she knows successfully and I'm helping her with the bit she doesn't she didn't rec didn't notice the first time so you want the read to be really successful and you just want to be the one who's going to provide the extra information whenever she needs it so you're being supportive of her reading and you're jumping in and helping whenever you think she's going to need that help it's really important for Scarlett on her first read to feel like she's had a really successful read and that she's enjoyed it because that's going to make sure that she understands the story and the meaning of the story is key to any first read. That's basically what we want to get out of a first read. Do we understand what the story is telling us and we want to be engaged and interested in it. So we give as much support as we can so that Scarlett can enjoy that first read together. All right, let's go from Hooray. Hooray, there's a hippopotamus on our roof having a birthday party. So Scarlett's turning the pages because that's important for her to be in control, in as much control as she can over the reading. Only three sleeps to go and then it's my birthday. So she got that first page beautifully. The first word, she just wasn't, it, she, it was just a new word for her. So I jumped in and gave it to her and then you could see how she phrased it and read it so beautifully. There's a hippopotamus on our roof eating cake and it has the two. Hmm, did Please. that make sense? Hmm, which word is it? Which word is the word, the challenging word. That might, I think that's a new word for you, this one. Can you go through that word slowly? Say it slowly. It is. And it is. That's right. Birthday two. Okay, so did you see there how Scarlett naturally went back and reread that little phrase to make sure that she was getting the sense of the story to her ear. So Scarlett, let's read it from here and let's go all the way through to the full stop. There's a hippopotamus on our roof eating cake and it has birthdays too. And it has birthday too. Can you hear that? You're listening to that reading? And, and it's, it's his birthday, birthday too. too. Great. We are going to have our party together. Mm. A jungle party and all our friends can come in animal costumes. That sounds cool. Let's make animal what do you see at the start, Scarlett? S H. Good. What sound does that make? Shh. Great job. Mm -hmm. Let's go back from here. Let's make animal. Can we go through that word slowly? Let's Sh shape. Shaped. Shaped. Okay. Let's see let's how that Let's make sounds. animal shapes. Invitation. Invitations. Ah, why would they need invitations, Scarlett? So, um, then the people would know that they can come to the party instead of the other people just coming because um, 
if you don't give invitations, then people won't come to your birthday party. That's right, so they need invitations. So there I'm just checking the meaning to see that she's on the right track with the idea of a birthday and invitations. And that's something Scarlett knows a lot about birthdays. So she's really uh, understanding the story so far. Let's go from there and let's keep reading this let's time. Let's make animal shapes invitations. Say, says. says my big sister. She draws the animals and cards then out that's right, and cuts them out. And out. And, and I, I do the, the cutting, colouring, colouring yeah. and, and sticking. And I think they're doing that down here, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's put. He's, What's happening there? He's putting um, stubble and things. Yes, he is. So on the roof. here we're just talking about the story, using the pictures to get a bit more meaning because we haven't done a book introduction with this one because it's uh, a picture book and we're just sharing it together and enjoying unpacking it as we go. All right, we're going to go from oops. Oops, the glitter. Could be glitter because it's gl, isn't it? That's that blend, isn't it? So go from oops again. And Oops, let's have a look. The, the glue, glue. Nice work, Scarlett. Gets, gets in, in my, my hair and on my clothes. Nice work. My hippopotamus drop doesn't doesn't wear any good wor worry wor worry about what do you see at the start of that word? B. Good. B and E like Yeah. So B. Being. Hmm, nice work. My hippopotamus, let me read that to you so you can get it to your ear. My hippopotamus doesn't worry about being and sticky. He, he says, says you just, just need, need lots of, of glue. Glitter. Could be. No, how do you know that's glitter? Good girl. Because I, I see like, um, I see um, the starting of little, which is like little. Great connection with another word that you already know. So you see Scarlett's bringing her knowledge of other words to the new word glitter that she's never seen before or read before. So as Scarlett was reading, I was anticipating where I felt there might be some support needed. And so for some of the words, I began the words with her uh, so that she got her eyes at the start of the word, which is where we always look as beginner, beginning readers for the start of the word, through the word to get the the uh, the word uh, to the to the eye, so that you're going left to right through a word. That's really important, um, and the support you can give helps the story to um, to move along. You don't want to get bogged down with every decoding opportunity. That just means that we stop listening and understanding what the story's about. Uh, and then it all gets too hard and kids don't want to be there. They want to stop. They don't want to, they don't want to read when they're not really understanding the text because they're so loaded with too much decoding. So join in and read with the child whenever you can. It's important that you sometimes give a child a whole phrase rather than individual words because phrases make meaning out of words. And when we have, uh, when we read in phrases, then the meaning gets better to the ear and better to the understand for, to the child's understanding of the text um, if we read in phrases. So you'll notice I took a I helped her with a phrase so that she could quickly move on through the sentence. So a phrase is a section of a sentence uh, which m makes sense on its own. So a phrase might be something like and cuts them out or I do the colouring and sticking. So it's a small section of a sentence, a couple of phrases or a number of phrases joined together to make a sentence. So they're little bits of meaning within a sentence.
So normally, we've read a couple of pages, so normally we would read all the way to the end. Uh, it's quite a big book, so it would probably be the case that uh, as uh, the adult, I might take over the reading and finish off the book so that we enjoy the story, so that uh, Scarlett gets the whole story in her head. And then we'd have a chat about um, what the story was about and um, you know any particular bits that we both enjoyed or liked. Uh, so at the end, you would you would definitely ask Scarlett uh, a nice open question like tell me about the story or which was your favourite part or you would share, you would engage with the story and say oh I love this picture here where the hippopotamus has got all of this food all over his mouth you know um, so you would make a connection so usually we try and make a connection with a text uh, through another a, a text that the child has read before so another picture storybook um, Scarlett, you know another one of these hippopotamus books, don't you? Which other one have you read? When the other book is like a girl and a boy and a hippopotamus. So when the girl and the boy, they went to the hospital together. Ah, I know the one, uh, there's a hippopotamus on our roof eating cake. That's the first one that was and ever it, written, written I, in this series. Who know the one in the beach? Ah, is there one in the beach too? Cool, maybe we could have a look at that one next time. So we try and make a connection between uh, the story and another story, or between the story and something to do with Scarlet, um, or perhaps even between the story and something that's happened in the world that she knows about. So we try and make connections with text as much as possible. We also try and find out what the problem was in the story and how the story, through reading the story, we find the solution. Um, and we just try and engage in as much chat about the book as we can.